it's it's time to fight back against Republicans, against the establishment, against the big corporate interests that really run the country. Because otherwise, it's not Trump who we're going to get next time around. It's someone even worse. It's going to be a President Ted Nugent. That's what I'm worried about. Something, you know, along those lines. Right. And and you know what? It's like almost like, you know, Ted, to, to me, I'm thinking, you know what? Ted Nugent ain't even rich enough. Like pick, <laughs> pick someone as racist as Ted Nugent. Uh, throw in, I, I guess, someone with the money of, of I don't know, uh, 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 Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, get someone who uh, is as, I don't know, as terrible as uh and coulter like one of and, those right figures. right like like trump you know I, I don't like the guy but every now and then he'll go on tv and like broken clock it's like yeah yeah that's pretty funny i, I uh, he's got a good point there yeah. uh and i'm not and it's in his point is usually one that ends up showing his his like new york roots which mm-hmm. you know he sometimes can't stray from but we're going to get someone who doesn't even throw anything out like that. Like we're going to get someone who, who, who would be for something even worse than a TPP or something like that. Yeah. And you know, what I really worry about is um, because you said that we're becoming more radicalized in a good way, but I also see um, radicalization and I, I know you probably see this too on the right. And I worry that the more desperate we become after each successive neoliberal president, as people become more economically disadvantaged, they're going to be more susceptible to and prone to these types of far right fascists, essentially. I mean, you could see this around the world with, you know, Bolsonaro in uh, Brazil and Bolsonaro. You know, you, you see this everywhere. The more desperate they become, the more likely they are to opt for someone who's just the crazy person who's just going to offer them relief. And that's kind of what we saw with Trump. And the way that I look at it with Beto O'Rourke is if he gets in and is another Obama who Obama promised, you know, to change the status quo and we believed him, but he didn't. If we live through another four to eight years of that type of neoliberalism, then I could only expect the desperation to grow and the radicalization to become more of an issue. Now, certainly there's going to be radicalization on the left as well. I think that I've probably moved to the left since Obama simply because now I'm getting more pissed off, but it's also probably going to happen on the right and people who are not necessarily prone to taking a stance on the left or the right, they might buy into whatever right wing propaganda is sold to them. Because if somebody is offering basically a solution to their problems, then they're going to take it like Donald Trump. He basically said, look, I know what's causing all of your problems. It's immigrants. And people bought that because it was an explanation. It wasn't the proper explanation, but it was one. So, I mean, I'm just, I worry about what another four to eight years of neoliberalism can do in terms of just the growth of white supremacy and just fascism in America, you know? So it's, it's not necessarily like, oh, these candidates are just clueless and out of touch. It's like, no, we, we need real reform. We need to change the system. Otherwise it's going to get worse, you know? And I don't, I don't want to be like, you know, an alarmist fear monger, but you know, you can see it, you know, people are hurting. Right. I mean, it's it, it's a great point you made about the the radicalization on the other side because it is it is really what what happened with with the Obama era. I mean, we 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 are seeing people basically and again a lot of this is is not his fault like he meant for it to happen. A lot of this just comes from unfortunately some of it's from his policies and some of it's from the fact that he was a black man who was president. Yeah. And Holy. and obviously that latter part of it is completely not something that I'm uh, attributing to him when I'm talking about what, what, you know, things that were on him. But on the other hand, uh, for example, not prosecuting a single person responsible for the 2008 financial crisis, that is on him. And that is something where, you know, people were disenchanted about when he didn't do anything like that, when he didn't do anything about that. And, yeah. you know, I, it's it's something that I think for the most part, just looking at the current 2020 contenders on the Democratic, of the Democratic, who throw their hat into the Democratic primary, I would say like all but maybe one or two were, were really pushing left there. I mean, obviously mm-hmm. some more left than others, but I don't know, aside from, I don't know, Amy 
Klobuchar and and maybe <laughs> Cory Booker, they were all pre- pushing pretty pretty more progressive than I would say the 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 bare minimum would have been in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it which is nice because it kind of goes to show the influence that progressives have. Like everyone is trying to compete to be progressive and they're trying to outflank Bernie from the left. And it does show that we have influence, but you know, it's this is more than just being placated, it's more than just putting on political theater. Like we actually need someone who will bring about real change. And even if we get Bernie elected, there's no guarantee that he can put forward an agenda. But I think of all people, he's the one that actually has a chance at bringing about social democracy because, you know, he's not going to be a normal president. Bernie Sanders isn't just going to fight with Congress back and forth. He knows that if we want to get anything, you know, uh, Medicare for all, tuition-free public colleges and universities, it's not just going to be the traditional legislative procedure in the political process. He's going to have to get people in cities across the country to protest and, you know, call. It's going to take action. And he's really the only one that understands it. So it's not even just only about policy to me. It's about politics. And I think Bernie, he understands it on a different level than everyone else. And I think that's really important. So, you know, credit to everyone who's moving left. A lot of it, I think, is probably just lip service and to pass, you know, whatever litmus test we're putting up for them, which is a lot of them. Um, but it's we like we actually need to not do politics as usual, as was promised with Obama. And, you know, the more that time ticks, the more as we get closer, you know, to climate catastrophe, you know, the more frustrated people are going to become. So I kind of feel like this is like one of our last chances to get someone who would be like an FDR, you know, and just change the system, kind of save capitalism from itself and maybe do social democracy or at least start that process to where he's so popular, hopefully, that, you know, successor after Bernie will try to do what he did in the same way that, you know, that was the case with FDR. So, you know, that's my hope. But I just I see the centrism and. I just I don't know who's in the mood for this, like with the Beto's. And of course, there's, you know, there's the people who are going to talk about, oh, well, he's so charismatic and my calves oh. and whatnot. But <laughs> come on, man. I don't I don't understand. We should probably let me pull that tweet up. We should probably at this point explain the calves tweet. So there's uh, a lot of tweets that are kind of um, a little bit disturbing with Beto and centrist Twitter. Well, this one, this one, I think, is by far the. Uh, the most infamous one, and, and there's a reason. It's because I think it's it's great. I'm not going to out this person, even though I, I know that they're sort of a public online figure who very much does not like Bernie Sanders, I can tell you that much. Um, but this is the tweet that everyone's referencing about Beto and Cavs. Now, I don't, remember, I don't remember how to say this guy's name because he's already dropped out of the race. Oh, uh, Ojeda, the guy, Ojeda? The guy oh, who, yeah, Ojeda. Ojeda, thank you. The guy from uh, West Virginia who already dropped out. Also, Avenetti already dropped out, but uh, this was her tweet. Ojeda and Avenetti as candidates are like the guy who thinks good sex is pumping away while you're making a grocery list in your head, wondering when he'll be done. O'Rourke is like the guy who is all sweet and nerdy, but holds you down and makes... <laughs> I can't even read this part. <laughs> And makes you come until your calves cramp. Oh my god! Oh, oh it's it's so bad, man. Like, oh, I'm like, uh, 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 uh. like how many <laughs> how many retweets did this get? Almost two thousand retweets, over eleven thousand likes. Oh. I mean, she was knocked for it. She was loved, beloved for it. It was quite disturbing. Quite disturbing. You shouldn't yeah. listen, please, people. Don't project pop culture on these things. Don't project your personal lives on these things. And definitely, please, don't project your sexual fantasies on these things. It's just... Yeah. Ugh. We don't appreciate that, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't uh, do that. <laughs> uh, uh, listen, listen. I, I'm, a big, I'm a big supporter of Bernie Sanders. I will never ever talk about how he makes me climax. I will tell you... <laughs> No, oh, grant, granted he does, but I will never talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You took it there, Matt. You took it there. 